Well, hello and welcome. This is Terry Roberts with DMAI, Destination Marketing Association International. And we are the trade association for convention and visitors bureaus. And we are so glad to have you all join us for our webinar this morning. I have to say, it's been a while since I've been this excited about a topic. And our topic today is, there's gold in the destination, claim it for your meeting. And I want to just take a quick second to thank ePro Direct, our monthly webinar sponsor. And we have Chauncey Keller, the Executive Vice President of ePro, joining us today. And we'll introduce uh, Chauncey at the end of the webinar. So welcome. We are, again, excited about the opportunity to talk to you about how you really can access um, everything that we know meeting attendees want to enjoy in the webinar or in the, in the meeting. And we're going to talk about it in this webinar and how you as the planner can prepare for a conversation with your host city to have an opportunity to access local knowledge hubs and intellectual capital and really mine that destination to offer something that is unique and one of a kind experience for your, your meeting attendees. And we hope to um, show you how you can use your CBB, your um, destination marketing organization, in any destination in which you hold a meeting as a conduit to really differentiate your meeting. And in that regard, I could not be more excited to introduce our friends and our panelists today. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Steve Genovese. Steve is the Senior Vice President of Sales and Services from the great destination of Austin and the Austin Convention and Visitors Bureau. Steve, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Austin. Oh, there you go. 32 years in sales and marketing uh, for Convention and Visitors Bureau industry. Steve, um, again, is currently in Austin where he oversees both the sales and the convention services efforts in Austin. And prior to Austin, Steve um, was the VP of Sales and Marketing in Chattanooga. And he also has, like I do, a long Marriott background behind him as well. So he speaks from a wide breadth of both destination and hotel knowledge. So Steve, so happy to have you here. And your partner in crime there, Linda Atkins, who is the VP of Services, also at the Austin CBB. And Linda, I don't know how you possibly could have been in Austin for 32 years because you look, you must have started when you were five years old. So welcome. Um, it's so exciting. I know that you lead both the convention services team and the Austin Visitor Center, and you've held so many uh, positions there in Austin that have to do with really helping planners differentiate their meetings. So Linda, welcome, and, and glad to have both the sales and the services side join us in this conversation today. Thank you. All right, Linda. So let's begin. Steve, um, I think that most planners are pretty well aware now that meeting attendees are acting a lot more like leisure visitors, right? They're really interested in attending a meeting in destinations perhaps that they've been excited personally to explore. And they have a desire while there to experience all there is to do in the destination. And planners, I think, are fairly comfortable with accessing their CVBs to help um, meeting attendees understand what there is to do in the destination, um, maybe after hours, uh, local restaurants, attractions, all of all things of those nature. But um, talk a little bit about how you help planners access that kind of information, but how you can take it a little deeper, um, and it doesn't just have to be after the meeting. Absolutely. Well, I believe every destination certainly has its attributes so that you can incorporate not only pre and post the conference, but even during now we're finding, and we'll get into that a little bit about incorporating the programming um, and destination together. Uh, so I think it makes an authentic conference. It's something that every year, I know the, the bar is getting higher and higher. Our meeting professionals are just really becoming so savvy and wanting to point to that one year we did this, one year we've changed it up, we've done something different, 
and certainly every destination can feed into that. But it takes a strategy and a planning that we can certainly talk about today. The, that word authentic really gets, I, I don't know which I hear more, the word experience or the word authentic, but they're ones that certainly get bantered around in terms of planners getting the best ROI. So you, you talk about differentiation. Um, how does a planner go about that differentiation? And I'm wondering if you might talk, I think um, almost everyone has re read in the trade press or knows because they attended that you hosted PCMA's um, annual this year, and um, it's always the gold standard in the meeting um, destination. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about PCMA's rationale um, in really wanting to reach deep into Austin's culture. Absolutely, and I believe we might have a, a slide of a few of the um, local thought leaders as well that uh, we incorporate into the programming. So what was really interesting, and this was new for PCMA as well, and Linda will certainly speak to it as well, um, you know, it was more than a year out, 14, 15 months out, where the marketing department uh, for PCMA started talking to our marketing department. Now, of course, the meeting planning department and ours have been talking for much longer than that, but that's where it was a really huge shift where the, the, the theme of the conference was just the, them being talked about and it was really a, just a, a whole uh, new whiteboard of, of ideas. So one of the first things PCMA wanted to do was, well, tell us more about the, what we call the intellectual capital of the destination. What are some of the things driving the economy? Who are some of the thought leaders that we could actually help us better understand how we could incorporate a theme together with the destination? And certainly, um, Austin has a huge amount of different opportunities there. We're certainly home to South by Southwest every year. For those of you who don't know, it just finished up this year. It's a, a huge festival, conference, uh, that really uh, is innovative and tries different things. Uh, we also have several music festivals. But these are just a few examples of what we did. Of course, the University of Texas, over 50,000 faculty and students, take over half of our downtown. So it's a huge yeah. presence in Austin. Yeah. Many destinations have universities, and as we learn more, this university is in the top 10 for a variety of fields, engineering, business, and so forth. So the medical, the, uh, the business school here, Macomb's Business School, one of the top in the country, they, PCMA was able to incorporate their programming with that. They came uh, uh, to actually do some of the track at the conference. Um, additionally, the Dell Medical School at the university is the first medical school to open in 50 years at a public university. It's not a very big school, but it's extremely innovative, and it uh, promises to be uh, on a fast track. And they have already, like again, a lot of destinations now, I hear that medical groups are doing mobile workshops, at, uh, simulation rooms. So getting outside the box of the center of the hotel and actually doing programming at that facility, and of course, the Dell Medical School is only seven blocks from the convention center. And then just another idea was the Capital Factory. Uh, that's a world-renowned incubator for technology that we have here. It's a great asset, so small business entrepreneurs starting an, with an idea and being able to take it all the way through from robots to uh, gaming. And uh, the gentleman here, Josh Bear, is the uh, general manager of that facility, and, and he was able to talk about how to, how to um, spruce up your job resume. So what I'd like to say is it might not necessarily be the theme that you think. It might be that they could incorporate some total I other idea that fits within your uh, goal and theme of your conference. That's so cool. And I heard Matthew McConaughey kick the whole thing off. That doesn't hurt either, right, Steve? Yes, that, that, was a, that was a huge surprise. <laughs> we loved it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I think maybe um, before we go any further that it might be wise to actually define this term intellectual capital because as buzzwords go, it gets bantered around quite a bit. And I'm not sure that sometimes people even know quite how to define it or how to understand it. So maybe Steve and Linda, first of all, maybe give us a, a formal definition and then a little dive into what it actually means. 
it's a work or invention that is a result of creativity, innovation that belongs to a particular individual, organization, or community. Uh, in the case of a destination, several destinations, members of their local business, academic, medical, arts, government, and entrepreneur communities can be minded to find rich and unique content and to support the program objectives. So I think we're shifting from just looking for sponsors. Uh, that's always a question, of course. Uh, what companies yeah. are around them? We'd like to ask for them to exhibit or sponsor, and that certainly could be part of those questions. But I think now we're getting into, oh, one of a kind unique educational programming that I can only get by coming to that destination. So I think that's where we're also looking to expand. And Destination Next, our association, uh, Destination Now International, uh, you know, Destination Marketing Association International prior, really talked about how um, the destination is becoming more and more a factor in the decision, certainly, uh, where a conference is held. It's not just the meat and potatoes of the conference space, which is important, but really uh, you have to ask yourself, can I only do this conference in this city and will it be that unique so that the buzz continues? So I think this feeds into that. Absolutely. And, you know, I was uh, in a conversation, just in, as in another example, I was in a conversation with Kelly Caver. She's in uh, Discover the Palm Beaches down in Florida. And Kelly was telling me about one of her salespeople that helped connect um, a planner to a, a local entrepreneur, a local company that had just won a, an award for innovation or, you know, connecting them to a plant in the destination that's doing something very similar, maybe in a different industry, but very similar to what they're doing. So no matter where you're going, these clusters of innovation are available and people like Steve and Linda really become the conduit to that. So, Steve, um, I know that tapping into these kinds of assets and connections, you know, we're used to Googling everything, right? So if you want a list of restaurants or if you want a list of local activities, it's pretty easy just to um, get into your Google search. But tapping into intellectual capital is something that is a little bit more in-depth, and it really does sort of require a conversation um, with an expert, someone like yourself? Yeah, so I'm going to tag team with Linda on this question, but certainly in the sales process uh, during the site visit, more and more destinations are uh, you know, educating clients about what these assets could be, possibly visiting the locations if there's some mobile workshop opportunities. And from there, uh, you know, we can talk about a little bit about how Austin is continuing to streamline and make it turnkey and easy for us to connect uh, our, you know, our meeting professionals to these entities. Yeah, we, um, you know, from the sales side, if it truly is a meeting planner that reaches out to us looking for what the local resources are, our sales team is fully engaged with what those offerings are. Sometimes they've selected the city already and then they're turning to the services team to help guide them and navigate the, the destination and who those local thought leaders could be. Um, so from the standpoint of really when we start those conversations, I would say the earlier the better. You know, the best thing for us to start the conversation really is to know what the goals and the obje objectives of the organization is and for that meeting specifically. So um, have that dialogue. Be prepared to have that conversation with your uh, destination about who those resources are, who they can turn to. Like we talked about locally, um, the medical school, the university, um, the local chamber of commerce um, is a great resource. You know, we're a high tech community. And so knowing who the contacts are at your local chambers or the universities, great, ass great asset to um, have that dialogue up front. So Linda, this does requir require a certain amount of preparedness, you know, this isn't something to, to do on the fly, it's something that needs to be incorporated early. You mentioned as early as the site inspection process that this could really become even a differentiator for destinations. So I think you answered my first question is when do I start mm -hmm. the conversation um, right. is as early as possible, right? Um, but then, so 
I'm curious what information do planners need to share with their CVB, and are there some questions that they should be routinely asking? Yeah, I think from, you know, we, want, we would want to know a little more about the demographic of the group. Obviously, we can do our research and look at their website and find out a little bit about that, about the organization, but I think having that open dialogue, um, letting us know about the group, who the, who the attendees are, what their interests are, what they want to accomplish, uh, what that education component should be, how their attendees learn. Um, you know, Steve, Steve talked about that experiential, doing the, doing the mobile workshops. You know, having really, taking advantage of going out into the community and truly experiencing, not necessarily just bringing those speakers and educators in, but actually going to those locations, see how they operate. And also really tying in the conversation like we talked about with PCMA. It wasn't just the dialogue with the meeting planner. It was the dialogue with who's responsible for the education content, the marketing team, talking to um, the entity that you're actually meeting with um, to make sure that the, the education and how you present the program is going to work in the space that you've contracted. So it's a lot of factors that really go into making sure that it's going to work well with the destination and who, who your resources are here. Steve, do you want to do you want to talk? I, I know one of the things, one of the bullets that I have up here, and I love this idea that you said that planners could actually talk about their industry trends or, or what's what's the buzz behind their attendees. I think it really is relevant because, you know, we find that some of the highest attended con conventions, uh, certainly, and again, bringing up South by Southwest, their model is they they have the crowdsourcing uh, for their actual panels uh, discussions, but so much of it is that their number one thing is they want it to be relevant to today. So they're taking risk and you know possibly uh, incorporating some of their programming. Um, shorter term, just so it's very relevant. So, you know, certainly with a, a city that has a variety of resources, we can tap into those trends, and you might be quite surprised. That, you know, some cities are, are extremely innovative and um, in different fields, and it, it continues to surprise me uh, as we talk about no matter what size city, destination, some, there's somebody doing international work of some kind somewhere that would be quite shocking and surprise you. So, um, you know, those, those are really great stories that people want to hear, and it's a great way to make the programming something they haven't seen five or ten times already at maybe other conferences. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest, I mean, it is probably the single biggest differentiator, and, and I think that you, when we were talking about this topic, said, you know, how does that planner, which I wrote down, you know, your exact words, how does that plan or convey then, you know, so first they tap into it, but then they have to somehow convey that they are going to be doing something in the conference that is kind of a one of a kind, you won't get this anywhere else than this year here, right? So want to talk a little bit about even how CVBs are the conduit to helping you um, support those great, rich things that you've mined uh, through marketing. Well, we're, I think we're fortunate. We have an amazing marketing team here. And, um, you know, something as simple as developing a microsite that highlights, um, we, again, we always promote the pre and post, but what they can do while they're here, how they can engage. So really utilizing your DMO as a resource for highlighting all the things um, through the collateral, through the microsites. Through social media, you know, we could even tap into their blogs that they're doing and highlighting some oh, additional yeah. components. Um, we we do that actually quite often um, with uh, one of our social media team members, so um, she can she can assist in your marketing efforts by tying in the local resources. So she's joining their conversations, right? We do. We, we have those conversations quite frequently. And if it's a group that reaches out to us that maybe hasn't utilized those resources in the past, we'll bring her into those conversations when they're here for a site visit 
to open that dialogue to help educate them on ways that they can improve their, um, their social media influences. Steve, anything to, to add there from just a, a bigger perspective of planners who, you know, kind of might, might not have gone down this road before? You know, getting back to, um, I, you know, you see a lot of websites where conferences are promoting themselves. And, you know, I would do, uh, we do, of course, pre-promotes for some of our bigger conferences. Um, but I think even if you have a little teaser of something unique or different, uh, and then just have a strategy of every month a different teaser about the conference. You know, maybe it's another speaker who's announced, somebody again that first time never seen before, uh, maybe that's that local thought leader that, uh, from that destination. So the sooner you can get those, those key, the bones of the conference set and then promote it uh, before even your housing opens, that really helps uh, generate that buzz. But so often we, we do see conferences where the program really isn't fully detailed out um, or even the bones of it to get you excited until much closer in. And sometimes I wonder, are, we, are there missed opportunities there? You know, so that's where if you can get a little ahead of it, I know everyone's so busy, but work with the destination on getting some of the, the, the teasers out. We've, in addition to the programming, we just have a lot of things all ready to go. Video, uh, things about the destination, uh, that would excite people about coming here. There's, it's so easy for us to send you that information that you can get things going that way um, and get people interested. So really, um, I know destinations have uh, really um, strengthened their opportunity to do that. And um, we'd love to see more associations really uh, have a, a more prominent feature on their marketing about the destination to get people excited about coming to the conference. Yeah, I mean, I think we all know from um, the destination or um, the decision to attend study that the destination ranks high. You know, 80% of attendees are saying that the destination influences their decision to attend. Another 30% say, you know, it can be the make or break. It can be the determinant factor whether they get motivated to go. So. Um, Linda and Steve, thank you. I think you did a really great job of conveying um, not only what intellectual capital is, but how um, folks like you in destinations are really the conduit, the key to tapping in. And we hope we've excited those who joined us today to take a, a deeper dive. Uh, in that regard, I'm going to um, encourage anyone who is not familiar with DMAI's Planner Facing Web Portal, Empowerment.com, to uh, log on and find their destination experts like Steve and Linda to get that conversation started. I know we have a lot of questions um, always about CMP credit because everyone does earn a half an hour of site management domain H. So you will see your certificate if you joined us today. Come in your inbox next week. Be sure to check your spam. It can often end up there. And uh, while um, we get ready to introduce our sponsor and then also take some questions. So if you have questions, please begin to put them in the question box. Questions, comments, ideas, thoughts. Um, and Elaine, who's monitoring our question board, will make sure that Steve and Linda answer any questions that we might have from our audience. And if you're looking for some more CMP credit or perhaps just really are enjoying our webinar series, um, next month I think we have a really a real cool bend. We will be joined by CSPI, who is working federally, nationally to um, engage planners in producing more healthy meetings. So we'll be looking at what the healthy meeting essentials are in April. And also in your follow-up email, along with the recording of this webinar, you'll get a link to register for April. So we hope that you will join us there. So I will um, now let you start typing in your questions for Steve and Linda. And I would like to introduce um, Chauncey and give her just a minute to uh, speak about EPRO. Hi, Chauncey. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. That was awesome, Linda. And, and 
Steve, that was I learned a lot on that. Um, but here at EPRO Direct, we have just celebrated our 15-year anniversary as a marketing and lead generation agency serving the meetings and convention segment of hospitality. So we actually work with both planners and suppliers. Um, our main two primary business functions serve um, on our on um, on the supplier side. We help destinations and hotels and resorts <clears throat> uh, build their group business um, by our marketing. And then on the planner side, we help conference organize market their events and also help out with event apps. So um, you can learn more about us at um, eprodirect, E-P-R-O-D-I-R-E-C-T dot com. Um, or you could always ask CMAI for our con um, contact information. But um, we are here to help in any way and just absolutely love our partnership with DMAI or now DI. But um, anything we can do to help, we will. Thank you. Thanks, Chauncey. So, E, I know you've been looking at, at questions, and there are a couple of questions for Linda and Steve. So you want to uh, kick those off for us? Yes, hi. Uh, great job. Thank you. And um, I know one question um, the group was curious about uh, are, you know, just what feedback did you get from the meeting planning industry from just the big PCMA industry event that you had when it came to trying and doing some of these different things? I think um, from from all of us, from the convention center, our hotel community, the convention and visitor bureau, our airport, we have received so many wonderful compliments. Um, you know, all the hard work and effort that this community put into hosting PCMA um, was truly well worth it. Um, based on the feedback, we actually continue to get um, from uh, from customers as well as even the local community that participated. Um, we, we received great comments from all of the vendors that, that participated and the contacts that they made, and we're truly looking forward to a lot of great new business coming down the road. Yeah, I'd just like to add, um, it just makes you feel proud to be in our industry because not only was it clients, but also other cities, other hotel companies, uh, just everyone making a point to tell us great things. And there were a couple unique things if you hadn't had, did not have a chance to go to PCMA. A couple things is we did a welcome at the airport, which was unique where you could get your registration badge. And then another thing is we had what we called the Austin House, which was, again, getting out of the mindset that everything has to be in that ballroom, but uh, going across the street and having a Austin House that incorporated programming that PCMA pushed out, and, but it also incorporated local um, Things such as uh, Kendra Scott, which is a fam famous uh, entrepreneur here now, jeweler, uh, to music, of course. We always have to have live music, uh, to all kinds of different famous local companies here, just to get people, uh, again, that one-of-a-kind experience. So those were just some of the few things uh, that we were able to incorporate to make it an Austin feel. Those are great examples. That Austin House reminds me of the Olympics. You know how whenever you watch the Olympics, there's always that that um, you know different uh, countries have their their house and and people and visitors can come and join and what's indigenous to that area. That's a really cool idea. I, I see a few more questions. Yep. Um, yep. So if a planner is new to this. Um, you know, integrating the destination more into their meeting, and they, they just want to start, um, what would be the best way to start doing that if they're going to just begin to slowly start integrating more about the destination into their meeting programming? What would you suggest? Sure. Well, of course, um, our sales uh, managers here at the, at, at the Austin uh, CBB and every destination marketing organization, um, you know, that would be the first place as you're looking at a city. Uh, you know, they have information on, you know, again, learning about the golden objectives of the organization, uh, possibly some thoughts about what the conference is all about. From there, they should be pretty knowledgeable about where we can tap into. And then hopefully booking the destination and then working, uh, you know, once we confirm our groups, uh, we immediately want to involve our services department because um, it could be three or four years that they're working with the clients um, just preparing. Um, and, and we're also updating folks all the time on, oh, by the way, this company just moved in here. Or this is something new that's going on with the bus. So we keep them up to date on what's happening in the destination uh, so that they can tap into that. So 
just working very closely from the beginning um, all the way to the end, um, you know, on uh, with to make it easy on you because all this is free and uh, we're just here to make sure the conference goes successfully. Okay, Elaine, Steve hit the buzzword that I um, had seen a question about and it always comes up and that is, you know, how much do I pay for this kind of service? And then the other um, that kind of relates, you know, how much and how large? So do I have to have a large citywide convention? Do I have to be utilizing multiple hotels? Um, in order to take advantage of your services and you know how are they paid for Steve because nothing's free right <laughs> well um, you know all, all size meetings are important to us uh, you know typically a group is 10 rooms per night or more and we have uh, sales managers uh, deployed for groups of you know as, as small as 10 rooms all the way up to you know 20,000 rooms but um, it's all good, and we have a lot of hotels here in Austin that have great meeting space. Uh, so they, you know, everyone pr wants that 50-room group, and of course we want those citywide groups as well that will meet at the convention center. Uh, so everyone is knowledgeable about the local e economy, the intellectual capital, as we say, and can certainly be a resource for any size group. And um, you know, some things get a little bit more involved, detailed with the bigger groups. Uh, but so often what we're finding is it's the small groups, they, they, uh, maybe they've never been to Austin, they tip their toes into the destination, it goes great, and the next thing we know there's multiple meetings, bigger meetings, and so forth. So that's why we, we don't really, um, you know, kind of segment it out. We're, we're there as a resource for all size groups. And, and Linda or Steve, can you talk about um, CVBs or DMOs and their funding? How are, DMO, how are they funded and, and how do planners then um, take advantage of free because of, of your funding sources? Well, I can touch. Um, our CVB is not a membership-based organization, so um, most of our funding does come from a portion of the bed tax that um, mm -hmm. is assessed to each room. Um, and then we also work really closely with partners. partners. Um, our partners in the community is everyone from the hotels to transportation companies, um, so we leverage some of those partner dollars too to help support our effort. Um, in other destinations, they do have membership-based organizations, so they have additional funds coming from membership fees. Right, but I can assure you every DMO has uh, a vested interest in making sure to grow the usage of their hotels, so it's a common theme that thus serves uh, for this kind of service. We, we, Every destination wants your conference to grow, have record attendance, be successful, and come back. That's great. Well, Steve and uh, Linda, I want to just personally thank you on behalf of DMAI and our planners and our peers uh, for doing such a great job of representing not only the topic today, um, but our industry at large. So thank you both very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Austin sometime soon. And um, we look forward to hopefully seeing all of you who joined us today um, in April as we talk about Healthy Meeting Essentials. So thanks and have a great day, you guys.